story. You know, I grew up. Uh, I grew up a uh, standard American diet. Uh, you know, I was pretty active as a kid. I played a lot of video games, though. Um, and really, when I got to about 12, 13, I really started packing on weight. And uh, it was just uncomfortable. And so, really, I was about 14 or 15 when I started my, like, journey into health and uh, wanting to have a feel better, you know. And, and because I was a big old, I was, like... I got up to like 240 pounds out of the 14 year old and that's just uncomfortable you know and me me and my friends we all played video games my brothers and you know ate the same foods and so we were all fat and we were like hey let's not be fat let's start going to the gym and eat healthier like because how can you play video games and have a lot of fun playing video games for your whole life if you're a fat fuck? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pardon the sandwich. You can cut the lip. I, um, anyways. <laughs> so we started doing that and we lost a bunch of weight. And then later on, you know, I, we started learning about like uh, veganism and plant-based eating. And we did that for some time and it just, I felt great on it. I lost a lot of weight and then it, we kind of switched and went back and forth and I kind of yo-yoed up and down a lot over the years, uh, trying different things and then falling back into standard American diet food. And, you know, uh, it's been, it's taken some shifting to get to the point where I'm at now with everything. Uh, and so, yeah, I mean, I, I just, for the last 14 years, I've been very interested in health and, you know, I would smoke weed cannabis and my mom didn't like that we were smoking. So she got us a volcano vaporizer, right? Mm. So that we could vaporize the weed. Wow. And yeah that got me like incredibly interested in other plants because on their website hmm. i like they had like a list of you can vaporize this plant at this temperature and just like a whole list of that and i started looking into all these plants and i'm like whoa there's all these like cool medicinal plants man like <laughs> that you can get awesome you know benefits from and and i just i went deep on is studying medicinal plants and psychedelic herbs and seeds and all that stuff and so and you know with psychedelic er herbs and plants comes the uh the man-made chemical versions of that type of you know substances that man makes mm. and that got me into psychedelics a lot more like i had already used acid and ecstasy some before getting into like research chemicals and that led to some very interesting experiences uh very life-changing for better or worse uh that led me to holistic healing and get it you know be fighting these addictions in me the food addictions the drug addictions the alcohol addictions so really like i i very much value uh, my ability to not be addicted to something. Something addicted, something me in it rips. Like if I'm allowing something to tug at my strings so much that I'm like using it addictively, I'm always very diligent about going ahead and like trying to nip that in the bud as much as possible. My worst thing is the phone, to be honest. Uh, yeah, <laughs> like I am. Yeah. But at the same time, it's a very positive addiction because I have learned to use it in such a positive way where I'm helping people, I'm yeah. sharing information, I'm learning information, I'm doing a lot of positive stuff with it. You know, like my phone is my work, really. Like I work on my phone all the time. Yeah. And I do a little bit of entertainment here and there when I when I feel like it, but it's mostly work. So it's 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 not the worst addiction to have. <laughs> yeah. But it definitely is one that I need to work on because I need to be getting out into nature more. Right? Sure. Yeah. And so that's kind of what I'm working on now is drop the phone, go mm. hang out in nature. Mm. Uh because it's very good. I don't want to go deep into this, but dopamine fasting, man, it, it is is really good. You know, 
if, if you drop your phone and all these technologies and dopamine habits for 24 hours, yeah. you will see how addictive some of this stuff is. Yeah. Like, yeah. But um, so we're actually talking, wanting to talk about the uh, no sleep experiments that I'm yes, doing. Yes, brother, definitely. Yeah. By the way, just so the audience knows and you so, know, it's it's I can we can hear you, but I don't think we can see you all the time. At the beginning, it was like completely oh, frozen, and then like oh. yeah, and it's okay. Just just to make you aware as well. Okay, I can sort of see you now, okay. so that's good, and we can hear you. But yes, um, okay. Yeah, I, I've just quickly to introduce you. We've known each other two years on Facebook. Your posts are amazing. I've like yourself. I use Facebook wrongly. I use it rightly. And even to this day, bro, your posts and your wisdom surprises me. I mean, I shouldn't be surprised, I guess. But to be honest, the amount of things you share, it's a joke. And the amount of things <laughs> I relate to you to that you do, age during, the hair growth, the, everything that we do. Uh, particularly as well, the, oh, yeah. sleep, the sleeping is something that I've never seen anyone really talk about. A few people, I think you have a unique experience with it, no, non-sleeping is the uh how's the sound right now is that that doing well the sound has been perfect to be honest brother from the very beginning okay yeah. okay so that's cool great yeah. great um so uh as far as no sleeping goes like i actually started it when i was a child so I said i did a lot of video games and i you know and so I would just freaking play and play and play especially in the world of warcraft where there's endless things that you can do, um, and and you always have something to do on a on an MMORPG, you know. Um, so me and my friends, we we'd end up on the weekends or on on a uh, summer staying up twenty four hour, you know, forty eight hours or however long till we passed out. <laughs> and um, you know, we all had good grades in school. We were all very smart. Uh, I honestly. When I first started hearing about, oh, sleep deprivation is really bad for you and, mm. you know, you, you don't want to be sleep deprived, it can cause so much damage, I mm. kind of bought into it for a while and really, you know, was like, maybe it is important to not do stuff like that. Mm. However, uh, back in 2018, mm. uh, I had, so when I, in 2018, my mom had died two years prior in 2016 and i was kind of in a very recovery state you know grieving a lot and and recovering from that loss uh, which i now view as the greatest gain that i've ever had uh you know the one of the best experiences i've had in my life was losing my mom and it was the not easy at all but it really made me it helped shape me into who i am now today and really changed my values a lot you know it was basically the beginning of my spiritual awakening and uh from then it, so in 2018 i had been doing a lot of physical labor and then i decided to get a door-to-door -door sales job kind of around mid spring and so i was like doing you know outside stuff and getting in the sun for you know the latter half of the day which was really awesome and you know i had never really done that much solar work uh in my life and come around september you know it starts going down into fall and september is also when my mom died and her birthday she died two days after her birthday actually which is pretty wild wow. uh, she had turned 50 hmm. at 50 years and two days and died Whoa. so anyway uh i quit my job i was like you know what if i'm getting depressed and i can't work like there's no reason for me to have a job i'm just going to stay home for the winter and deal with this and so I was like, at first I was fasting a lot. Like I did a six day, six and a quarter day dry fast. And then I, I was like, all right, well, now it's time to really start getting into urine, right? Mm. So I started getting into the urine therapy and just digging deep in YouTube for some really good videos on that. And I found Zen Ottman and okay. Zen Ottman, it teaches mm. all of this good stuff. Mm. Uh, just all all kinds of good stuff for consciousness expansion and cleaning your body and all of that. 
everything like he's he's awesome best Mm -hmm. teacher like one of the best teachers i've ever had like easily top three uh but so he talks about no sleep uh and you know skipping sleep for 24 to 48 hours Hmm. and um so he he would you know talk about this and it got me thinking you know and he'd he'd say well so what he talks about it is that he read it in an ayurveda book once Hmm. that if you don't sleep for like 24 plus hours or so Hmm. um your brain heats up a couple degrees and it burns off things that are in your brain and kind of starts opening up pathways and your brain starts working better. And so if you're burning off things in your brain, that opens up more room for water to be in there and it allows the light to move properly. So Mm -hmm. your, your brain, your memories, uh, you actually find this. I don't need as much sleep. Um, and so, but if I am sleeping a bunch, then I like, I want to sleep more. Like if I'm sleeping a bunch, I will sleep. I will just sleep. (laughs) And so I go in cycles actually with this, where it's like, if I went to a medical professional, I guarantee you, they would say I'm like manic depressive bipolar. Sure. Because I, yeah. I go in like a, especially in the spring and summer, I, I go in like a one week cycle where it's like, you know, the sine wave where it's like I go up and then down. And when I'm up, I'm dynamic. When I'm down in the cycle, I'm very mm-hmm. low. Mm. I don't consider depression a bad thing. I consider it a time of resting, deep mm. rest, you know. That's exactly what that word is to me, depress or mm. deep rest. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> and so I started experimenting with that more, that no sleep thing. And I, I found the same results that he was talking about and people in his classroom were talking about mm. with, uh, you know, so brain working better, very intuitive. You get uh, just really good ideas come to you. You should create and do you like, need to um in the ideas. did you do um so is it recommended i guess if people were watching this including myself I, i'm keen to experiment i guess would it um be 24 hours would be that a good marker to start with do you push do you recommend if people are new to this to start slowly or do you go full out like is 24 hours a good one to try with this it it, it absolutely just like with aged urine or anything absolutely start slowly Hmm. absolutely uh or fasting you know i know you've recommended people that want to get into longer term fasting you know doing the intermittent first and just building it up sure. absolutely a necess- necessity mm-hmm. because the no sleeping is very deep waters mm-hmm. it's not for for anyone who's very In not um, like incapable to deal with very high states, um, because it, it, it's intense. It's like being on psychedelics for the whole time you're awake. Wow. Yes. Um, and I'll get into that actually. But so hmm. the other thing too um, that people need to know before really trying this is okay. So I'm going to get into why we sleep, what sleep is for. Hmm. and how we cannot sleep right yes uh, properly in a proper manner oh. so sleep yeah yeah what i what I, in my experience what i've researched other people's experiences the biggest thing i can see sleep like especially that deep restful sleep you know where you're not dreaming or astral traveling that deep unconscious sleep that is for healing your body right yeah right as we're aware, uh, at least most of us should know that. Uh, anyways, so that that's what deep restful sleep is for. Now, you if you want to experiment with not sleeping, you need to be heal you know in a process of healing your body or like very far in your process of healing your body and not damaging your body so much. 
Well, so yeah. Yeah. one of the biggest factors that I find people who sleep a lot, they eat a lot of cooked foods. They eat a lot of foods that are oxidating. So right. oils, salts, yeah. you know, all this stuff that is really not easy on our bodies to process. Yeah. Um, and it's, this is oxidating foods. So that, so if, I don't know if you know this, but melatonin mm. is the most powerful antioxidant in our bodies that our bodies produce that is mm -hmm. and so if you have a lot of oxidating matter in your body then you're going to need a lot of melatonin production yeah to uh -huh. offset that uh oxidating food oh yeah and so yeah um a lot of people they don't even dream that much you know they're they're mostly in deep restful states of sleep uh, you know there's a lot of people that i've talked to that really you know, they, they don't remember their dreams or they're not dreaming. Yes. Or, yeah. You know, it's kind of That's a, interesting. Well, I never thought of that. A lot, not, of, um, a lot of normal people don't dream a lot and remember their dreams because they they need the deep restful sleep due to the damage of their unhealthy lifestyle and toxicity of eating a load of cooked foods and all the time and um, especially mm -hmm. late at night. So, yeah, I, I, I agree with this, what you're saying. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And so um, if you can be you know if you're doing more fasting if you're eating you know good organic fruits or doing even liquid fasting on juices urine especially um distilled water um you will find yourself waking up with fewer and fewer hours of sleep or you know i know you've talked about uh you know semen retention causing this as well that's another yes. loss of energy Huge. so the biggest mm. thing uh, so so when it comes to properly not sleeping you want to be in an energy cultivation lifestyle so semen retention eating healthy mm. foods water rich fruit mm. doing fasting doing sun gazing getting out in nature a lot meditating mm. doing breath work these are all very powerful energy re energy retention and energy cultivation processes that will um aid in your ability to not sleep yes. so something that i always find helps me like every time that i do urine therapy at night like it's almost a guarantee i'm not going to sleep till 2 or 3 a.m if not the whole night yeah that's interesting <laughs> so, like, yeah. Yeah. At least as far as like heavy urine therapy, you know, doing the rubbing on the, the forehead and the temples that can definitely uh, be doable at night and not cause you to not be able to sleep. But like if I do a urine enema at night and like, you know, <laughs> up the nose, it's almost guaranteed I'm not going to sleep yes. because urine is so filled with energy. And it's so regenerating for us that it, the body's like, there's no need to sleep. Exactly. Agree. 100%. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, so I would say, uh, you know, in answer to your question, definitely start slowly and work your way up. I'd say 24 hours is a pretty solid uh, time to start with um, if you wanted to experiment with something like this. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, you know, just build it up from there. Like, well, I had told you that I'm, I might try and stay up until this uh, video. Oh, yeah. I had just had a dragonfly land on me. That was cool. Uh, that I might try and stay up till this video. And, it, um, you know, it's a very intuitive thing doing this no sleeping thing, just like fasting, mm. just like food. You know, the best way to do it is the best way to fast from sleep is do it intuitively. So, you know, if you're awake and you, let's say you start experimenting with this and you get up to like 36 hours or 48 hours and you're just feeling weak and tired, like that might be a good time to go ahead and stop, yeah. you know, and excuse me, uh, if you're doing exercise, if you're doing fasting and healing your body and there's times where you can't sleep, but then your body asks for you to sleep, then you should sleep. I, I yeah. think that, um, you know, it's, it's like when we were children, we didn't just, you know, eat just because, you know, we ate cause we were hungry. 
yeah. it, we didn't just sleep just because we slept because we were tired you know and yeah. it's it's the same thing i feel like if you if you have a massive amount of energy your your cycles are going to be a little bit differently and over the last few years since i had my uh holy spirit spiritual awakening i have just had a massive abundance of energy and i've been building a light body you know i've been developing my light body gaining strength in my light body and it makes this so easy yeah you know to to not sleep you know, I'll do, yeah. I'll do, I'll be starting a fast and, mm-hmm. and do a little bit of urine therapy at night. And I'm just like, oh, I guess I'm not sleeping tonight. <laughs> like, it'll right. be like, I'll be yeah. laying there, like chilling on my phone or, you know, reading a book or what have you, which if I'm on my phone at night, I'm always using red light filters or red light, blue light filters, Smart. obviously, <laughs> because, mm-hmm. you know, you, you still want to release that melatonin. Mm. Even if you're not going to sleep, you still want to release melatonin. Hmm. If you uh, want, well, you don't have to, you know, if you, if you had a lot of work to do at night that you wanted to do, you know, having some white light on might, you know, help you stay more awake. Um, I do get restful at night. Hmm. And so one of the things that uh, comes into this, why you, why you would want to produce melatonin not only just because of its antioxidant properties. Um, so as, as you're aware, I'm sh- um, melatonin and DNT are related. Yeah, they so are. So there's yeah. actually a the difference between melatonin and DMT is a carbon dioxide molecule. And so when you're sleeping, the way we produce dreams is we are breathing in a certain pattern that causes you in the blood below and for whatever reason like th- this is also just theory on that yeah. you know there's no real science proving that that's exactly how it happens but i do believe hmm. that this article dmt melatonin and miracles has it pretty solidly essentially what's happening in this theory is hmm. that you know your blood is is have having reduced carbon dioxide and so it, your pineal gland is able to start pulling co2 off of the melatonin turning it into dmt and producing a dream state right so yeah. if you're awake at night and if you do meditation and get down into a theta state or even gamma state uh or delta if you wish whichever state you want to be in you know just a restful state um a restful uh higher frequency wave i think it is uh that's it yeah they get faster as you go down essentially or whatever i don't know all the terminology about frequency amplitude and all that the difference but anyway so you know it goes theta then delta then gamma brain waves are the really restful brain waves um and so if you do meditation and get into these uh restful states uh while maintaining your awareness and wakefulness in your mind uh and then you do breath work especially like i know there's different modalities of breath work that are specifically for dmt and gamma production um you will be able to have dmt experiences while you're awake mm-hmm. and have you know you can astral travel obviously uh you know without having to do the the actual sleeping part um you can have visions you can have uh you know different things uh like that different uh psychic abilities start activating you become very intuitive you become very uh you know active on your clair senses so claircognizance clairvoyance clairaudience you know those those psychic senses where it's like you know i when i stay awake uh, at night for say 24 hours um that next morning is a very magical morning to me because I will go outside around sunrise and I get to go sun gaze and I start 
just having the most amazing ideas. Like it's it's quite literally like I'm tripping on yeah. DMT for as long as I want to, really. Um, and the uh, it's just such a great a, a consciousness expansion experience to me to be doing this no sleep stuff. And yeah. uh, I don't know. Um, let's see. Is there anything else I want to talk about with that? Is there any questions I, that you yes, have? Yes, I have. This is a great information. I have a question for you um, because I want to experiment. And I'm wondering how um, I understand what you're saying with um, a healthy lifestyle definitely is really good for this so that we can ready into that. Um, but then um, I've, I've experienced before when I sleep that I, um, I basically don't like if I'm, I have a fear, I guess, Carson, of the, um, the, do you know when you feel drunk because you've not had sleep properly? Have you, have you passed that stage? Because uh, yeah. when I, I don't like it, um, I don't like the feeling of being drunk because the thing is I'm, I'm teetotal now and I just don't like feeling drunk when I'm not. And I, and it comes when I don't sleep, um, for a certain length of okay. time. Okay. So the altered state that you're talking about is definitely um i would say it goes away to a degree like it it gets for me as long as i'm doing it properly it gets to a point where the the no sleep state i i feel relatively normal um and you might also be it because you're not used to that state it might be a bit intoxicating feeling um and that makes a lot of sense actually i think i do remember definitely feeling that uh when i was first experimenting it with it especially as a kid mm. um now i still get into these incredibly altered states but I, they're much more akin to a psychedelic state that i get into when i do this I can walk around and just fine and interact with people um, when I'm on no sleep. Yeah. Uh, sometimes though, like if I get into a, a lull in my consciousness where I just am a little bit tired, but not really, and the psychedelic state has kind of passed to a degree, yeah. um, then it can be a little difficult for me to, to be around people um you know i get into a, a state like last night i was it, i was coming up on 36 hours awake yeah and my cousin and i had gone out to do some door dashing and like after our first dash we had gotten our second one and uh we were picking it up and i was just feeling like god i need like my cousin was listening to music that had lyrics that I i'm not super fond of and like I just, it, it had my thoughts directed in a really weird way. And I like, I felt spiritually sick from looking out my phone, doing the door dashing really? and yeah. or like energetically sick. I don't know. Uh, so like the screens can get very intoxicating to me. Uh, yeah. Music gets me intoxicated uh, when I'm in that state, because one of the things that you, uh, uh, the, the, the very powerful of this is it really speeds up your reality intake and mm -hmm. projection of reality. So oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, in other words, manifestation, your, your thoughts yeah. produce, you know, reality and your thoughts and emotions. Is it fair to say that to um, like reality. when you take like magic mushrooms, your sensations, the, the sounds get louder, the visuals get louder. It's a similar effect, isn't it? Everything magnifies, I guess. And it's not, it can be overwhelming. Very so. much. That very much. And so, you know, when you're in these psychedelic states, you know, society is not exactly the easiest thing to deal with. Um, I know at the beginning of my Holy Spirit awakening, uh i until i found hape or rape uh i i was very like agitated by everything in society like being around people mm. uh being on the street with passing cars would just freak me out like and so my friend yeah. gave me a dose of of hape and uh and instantly i like calmed down i was like all right i'm good to go yeah. um hmm. 
Hmm. One thing, so like I was saying, you know, you'll, you'll, in these higher states of consciousness that you get into from not sleeping or psychedelics, even for that matter, you know, you have to be very wary of your thoughts because they will manifest. Hmm. And, you know, you, if your thoughts are, are not really uh, that up to par, yes, you might feel kind of like you're having a bad trip. Yeah, got you. You know, yeah. Yeah. on psychedelics or not sleeping. Mm. And so having purity of mind definitely is very important for either not sleeping or psychedelics. Um, you know, being out in nature, I find, can be the most incredible It's funny you're bringing thing. this up. So in like, that case, I, I felt super... Oh, can I just interrupt with one, one idea oh, on I, that? Because um, you'll resonate with this. Go ahead. So, yeah. so yeah. what you, because what, yeah. this is against the idea that sleeping, you see the mainstream version of sleeping is if you sleep, you're going to be in trouble. But in a way, that's true from what you're saying, because if you go through a lack of sleep for a long period of time and you're not in the right level of consciousness, that can make you go crazy, can't it? Mm -hmm. from what you're saying, well, you can so, go a little bit. No, so exactly. Well, in, in the clinical trials of you know they've they've studied the lack of sleep and the effects of a lack of sleep i don't know what their subjects lifestyle was or what but i can almost assume it was pretty standard american lifestyle if yes that's, uh, exactly. you know if it's uh -huh. that's usually what their subjects are and so the science on it on a person living that type of lifestyle is going to produce some effects from something a lifestyle like me but they basically they talked about how uh, or so what the uh sorry i had something uh no worries what the science says about not sleeping is that you you know say 48 hours into it you start or i, I forget specifics Definitely at 72 hours, they say that you start seeing and hearing things. And to yeah. me, that sounds like your clear, your, your psychic sense is starting to activate. You know, you'll, you'll start seeing spirits. You'll huh. start hearing people talking or people's thoughts. Yes. Um, or, or even, you know, the, the schizophrenic route of it, um, you know, you'll start hearing very negative thoughts. You'll start tapping into negative people's thoughts uh, if you yes. are, yourself are negative. Yes. Um, or yeah. or have these have these uh, energies inside of you, and so purifying your body, mind, and spirit is definitely a very big, powerful, uh, necessary thing if you want to dredge in these deep waters of psychedelics or no sleeping and fast no. Because I usually combine the no sleeping with fasting, but if I eat a little bit of fruit or juice, you know, that really screw with it. The biggest thing that really screws with me if I'm mm -hmm. fasting mm -hmm. is if I ate, um, you know, crappy food prior to it, sure. yes. that, can, that can affect me a bit. And mm -hmm. also breaking that fast. If I'm not sleeping and, and doing fasting and I break that fast with something I'm not supposed to break it with, yeah, that yeah, will tired. help me instantly to need to sleep. Yeah. Uh, how do you deal with so... how do you deal with tiredness then? Um how is it um you deal with tiredness to keep awake? Is there techniques you're using quickly? Yeah, absolutely. So well urine enemas and urine skin rubbing is a uh, huge. Also, urine up the nose is great. Um, and, uh, just urine therapy in general, um, other, uh, energy cultivation, uh, methods such as going around and walking in the sun, getting fresh air, doing breath work, grounding, um, Qigong, I mean, just really, really any sort of energy cultivation method will help you get through that tiredness. If you're really relaxed and you're in these uh, theta and delta states or even gamma, it, you might be a little tired. I never really am tired in gamma. Mm. Uh, when I'm producing a lot of gamma brain waves, I'm just, I'm very <laughs> chill. My thoughts are very chill and I have a very high amount of energy. Uh, in gamma 
And so that's honestly one of the biggest things is cultivating a very good, a lot of gamma brainwave activity will help with either fasting or not sleeping. Um, and that will also help with um, psychedelics too. So if you can, if you're on psychedelics and you can learn, if you learn methods to produce a lot of gamma brain waves, mm -hmm. um, it will be much easier to direct your thoughts mm -hmm. and not be thinking in the, in the monkey mind, mm -hmm. um, which, you know, that, that monkey, that, that monkey mind that just is rattling off all kinds of different thoughts. It's, it's usually because you're in like alpha or beta state uh, of brain waves, which is, you know, those slower, more intense or whatever. I don't know exactly how it is, but it's, you know, a, a bigger wave essentially that, that is producing. So it produces a lot of thoughts and that monkey mind chatter, you know, that's why meditation is very important for awakening because it reduces that and it allows you to direct your thoughts more uh, instead of being the observer of a multitude of thoughts that you're just like, I don't even want to be thinking about that. Why am I thinking about that? Mm. Um, one of the effects that I get is I get very childlike. I feel really? like I'm a child. Like I, I, yeah. when I haven't slept for like 24 to 36 hours, yeah, I feel like a kid on Christmas. Like wow. yeah. once that sun comes up, I feel like the, so excited. I feel amazing. Hmm. I, I don't even think about food. Like I don't even think about any, any drugs or anything like, and honestly, like even hmm. cannabis when I'm in this state, like yeah. really doesn't, it doesn't go well with it. I guess that's what um, a kid feels like. Um, a kid feels all the time, isn't it? Like you said, a kid on Christmas. Well, children, exactly well so children are constantly in a psychedelic state of mind because their mind is literally manifesting so yeah. if you know psychedelic the the term means mind manifesting and so children are like high all the time on their own chemicals and uh, developing a mind you know you're you're manifesting a mind into a human body and it takes a it they're literally like if you hang out with children <laughs> like if you or like you know if your friends have children and you're like hanging out with them and you're playing with the kids like or talking to them or anything like you're like dude this kid is like on some psychedelics like it's it's literally the most eye-opening uh, thing i've ever seen is like these children are literally in a psychedelic state of mind all the time because mm -hmm. they're literally growing a mind mm -hmm. um yeah. I think oh. this is going to cut out. So, um, um, is there... I think it's going to cut out. We'll start a new Zoom. Is that okay?